With a click of the mouse, the New York Times emailed millions of people an offer that was simply too good to be true. The original email contained a special discount meant for just 300 people and offered them half off if they reconsidered canceling their subscriptions. But eight million people later, the New York Times had some major cleaning up. Time to let the Willis watchdogs out. Grant Cardone is an international sales expert in LA and the author of 10X. Carol Roth is a business strategist and best-selling author in Chicago. And Mar Marjorie Clifton is the national independent editor for GoVote.com in D.C. Carol, this is not good strategy, is it? <laughs> It's not good strategy, Jerry, but I can tell you on behalf of anyone who's ever had to send an email blast before that this is something that keeps you up at night and probably <laughs> gives you night sweats, too, because it's such an easy mistake to make. All you need to do is just press one button or click one box, and all of a sudden your email goes out to a whole lot of people that it wasn't intended for. I'm going to say on this one it was a pretty small mistake. Uh, no harm, no foul, no sensitive information was disclosed, so I'm going to say not too big of a deal for the time. Well, Grant, though, I look at this and I think, I got this email. I think maybe I should cancel my subscription because I'm going to get a pretty good darn offer to rebuy, right? Hey, maybe somebody at the New York Times is coming to their senses and saying, hey, let's just get rid of this newspaper. <laughs> so it doesn't make any sense to me. It's a major, major snafu, from my viewpoint, major snafu business mistake. They only have 18 million subscribers there. Most people are going online now. You question why anybody gets a newspaper delivered to their home, and they're going to send 8 million of their subscribers, hey, in case, we'll give a discount. So you know that's going to cost some revenues in this next quarter. Yeah, no kidding. Marjorie, what do you say? Well, I think we've all been there and had that awkward reply all to it that included our boss or our mother-in-law. And I think this is an, another nice reminder that we have to be very careful when we're using technology of any kind. Other businesses have done it, and they did it this time. And I will say, great lesson to consumers. Cancel your subscriptions, and you'll get a much more discounted right. rate because I'll want you back. Right. There's, there's something to be learned here. Okay. I, Speaking yeah. of learning something, some people's claims that all you 20-somethings out there are lazy and entitled. A new study by MetLife finds that those born in the 1980s and 1990s are out, actually outworking the older population. More millennials are working longer hours and even taking on second jobs. Marjorie, what do you say? Well, I think the millennials have, have entered the workforce in a very different time in the economy as well as, as, the, as the digital world, which are two things that make them very distinctive. And so I think that it's become a lot more acceptable to work a lot of different jobs as bloggers or social media advocates, which are things that they're uniquely suited to do and have been doing their entire career. But, I mean, I can speak from my own personal experience. My intern that I have that does my social media also works for a nonprofit and works for a restaurant at night. And she likes it because it gives her diversity in her career, gives her a lot of exposure, and I think they're really smart, and they do work very, very hard. Grant. People should be working harder right now. This is a very difficult economy, so whether you're a Gen Y, Millennium, or a baby boomer like me, look, I'm a baby boomer, 53 years old, I'm working harder, I'm working longer hours, I'm doing more to move the ball down the field. This economy is going to be sluggish for a long time to come. The unemployment numbers are going to go bad. Uh, the other way bad and and people need to get used to this new economy and this new work ethic. Carol. I don't know who conducted the survey, Jerry, but I think it's the same people who do the survey for the family few because I am just not buying it. <laughs> With all the businesses that I advise and everyone that I have talked to, this just isn't the case. The millennials may be working more hours, but they are not working harder and they are not working smarter. And part of the reason is technology. They're distracted by the Internet, by their cell phones and by texting. And kind of like what Marjorie said, a lot of these people are spending a lot of time with their energy in a number of different directions and they're doing a bunch of things halfway instead of focusing on one job so they may thumb their nose at the desk job but if you focus on doing one thing well you probably will work a little <laughs> bit harder but you probably won't be working so many hours okay well speaking of texting guys if you thought drunk texting was bad get a load of this more and more folks are actually shopping online after having one too many drinks check out some of these more interesting drunk purchases a $5 cat-shaped phone cover, a $3 pair of sunglasses with a $17 shipping fee, and my favorite, a $10,000 motorcycle tour of New Zealand. Bad idea, right, Grant?
Well, it's a bad idea to shop like that, but at least they're spending money and contributing to the U.S. economy that needs the expansion right now. Maybe we should just so I remember put beer in, in the water taps. You know, I mean, if that's the well, case, if that's all it takes. I, I remember being in Rome and saying, hey, can I have a cigar in the store? And they're like, you're in Rome. You're not. You're in Italy here. You're not in the U.S. You can do whatever you want as long as you're buying our clothes. <laughs> Carol, what do you say? Well, Jerry, I think having buyer's remorse after a night of drinking is better than having other kind of remorse after other activities that you might do after drinking. And if you business beer or you beer goggle when you purchase something and you wake up the next day and you don't like what you purchased, at least you can return it for a full refund, which you cannot do in the other scenario. <laughs> well, you know, I know what my mother would say. She would be saying, don't do any of that. All right. Car <laughs> Grant, Carol, and Marjorie, thanks for your help tonight. Great job, guys. Appreciate Thanks, it. Well.